ओके वी आर लाइव नाउ हेलो एवरीवन आई एम संजय गुप्ता आई वेलकम यू ऑन संजय गुप्ता टेक स्कूल सो दिस इज डे सिक्सटी ऑफ सेल्स फोर्स लर्निंग बूट कैम्प एंड इन दिस सेशन वील बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट इंटीग्रेशन सो एज पर योर डिमांड लाइक आई इंक्लूडेड दीज सेशन इन द बूट कैम्प एंड आई हैव प्लान टू वीक्स फॉर इंटीग्रेशन एंड आई हैव अंकित जैन विद मी so uh, hello ankit uh, welcome to the platform yes, sanjay yeah thanks so, for this opportunity sanjay yeah ankit so ankit is having around 10 plus years of experience so he will be taking all the sessions related to integration right so let's start with the session and uh, i'm going to share my screen so that uh, we can cover the beginning slides first and then i will hand over uh, stage to ankit right so you can see uh, right now we are having day 60 of uh, salesforce learning boot camp and uh, uh, this this boot camp is going in good direction and uh, uh, total 60 sessions we have completed so far and uh, in this session we are uh, focusing on integration right so uh, let me introduce ankit in front of you so um, like uh, i i would request ankit uh, please if you introduce yourself so that will be good so over to you ankit thanks sanjay thanks uh, thanks for the welcome hello everyone uh, good morning good afternoon good evening based on your geographical location uh, i am ankit jain i do have more than 10 years of experience in the salesforce ecosystem i am working as a salesforce architect or moreover i am also a certified instructor as well as a corporate trainer too uh I have done the few certifications in the Salesforce, including the administrator certification, app builder, PD one, PD two, JavaScript developer one. Moreover, as I said, I am a Salesforce certified instructor too. So, I am a certified instructor for the PD one. Uh, that's all about me. Moreover, uh, I do. Uh, I am active uh, majorly on the Stack Exchange and the Dev community. So, in case you do have any questions on the communities, you can also reach out to me there. Thanks, Sanjay. yeah great ankit so um, i am happy to have you on this platform and uh, thank you for sparing some time for the community and uh, uh, sharing your knowledge so uh, guys you can see uh, you are interacting with a experienced folk like he is having lots of experience and he has done lots of session for uh, various corporate organizations and you can see the list of certifications and uh, he is one of the certified salesforce certified instructor right so i hope you all are lucky to have ankit here so moving forward uh, like if you have any question related to salesforce or integration so you can join this telegram group and uh, it is actually a self help group where people are asking question and uh, like few people are uh, answering uh, questions to the problems whatever whatever is being asked right so you can become part of this telegram group and you can grow together so here you can see we are in week 17 of this boot camp where uh, we will be learning about integration right so we have covered uh, lots of topics in this boot camp and uh, lots of topics are planned for future as well right so if you have not followed sanjay gupta tech school and you have if you are joining uh, this boot camp for the first time this session because integration is very demanding nowadays so you can just uh, follow sanjay gupta tech school on youtube linkedin instagram and telegram and all the important links are available in the video description like you can find a session tracker where all uh, live sessions those have happened so far you can find and whatever session will be happening in future you can find those as well right so just share the information so right now we are having two boot camps one is related to salesforce and another one is related to cyber security okay so now i am going to hand over mic to uh, ankit so now ankit will be explaining each and everything related to integration so it is just introduction session so there will be around 6 uh, sessions we have planned and if there will be need of more sessions so we will be uh, planning those accordingly so over to you ankit uh, sure sanjay so could you please allow me to share the screen now uh, yeah so let me just stop screen share yep now ankit you can share the screen thank you Again, let's get started with the very basic 
before we go and deep dive into the integration let's start with the term what is integration what we understand the term for the integration integration is nothing but it's a process of binding two or more than two systems together so that they can share the data they can share the business processes moreover they can also share the ui if you have to take an example generally whenever the enterprises runs they do need more than one software and all those softwares needs to be in a different technology right for example let's take an example of an sbi bank we all familiar with this sbi bank let's say sbi is the bank uh, who is performing the integration in sbi we do have the different types of services we do have the core banking services we do have the loan services sbi also do the kyc's right sbi also take the fixed deposits recurring deposit there are multiple services offered by the sbi right now again if i if i have to deep dive let's take one example that sbi have the core banking system which is designed in the uh, let's say java okay i'm trying to explain this pictorially let's say we do have a enterprise this is our enterprise i am naming this enterprise as the sbi for now okay and in this enterprise we do have the multiple system let's say we do have the one system which is designed in java it's bit slow uh we do have the one system which is designed in uh java another system let's say they are also using for example salesforce for their customer management where they are putting all their customer interaction so they are also using the salesforce for the customer management they do have another system on which they are doing the loan onboarding let's say this system they have designed in python all the systems they are in different language like in lwc we all know we do have the apex we do have the lwc python is all together a different scripting language java it's all together a separate language right but when the sbi bank have to run all these systems needs to be integrate with each other when i say integrate means all these system needs to communicate with each other with each other right so whenever the multiple systems they are communicating with each other they are referred as the integration i hope the term is clear to everyone when the multiple systems uh, needs to communicate with each other they have to either share the data they might have to either share the process it is referred as the integration now what are the different benefits that we get with the integration the first benefit that we get with the integration is we can bring the data from the outside system or from the external system into the salesforce for example again if i have to take the sbi as example let's say sbi they do manage uh, their core banking data when i say the core banking data like their casa accounts into a java system now you want to bring all their casa accounts into the salesforce how you want to how you want to bring it you can bring it with the help of integration likewise there are few more benefits that we get with the integration we get the enrich of the data we can have the publisher and the subscriber model where one system will publish the information and one or more than one system can go and subscribe to that information moreover we can also sync the data in between the two different systems let's say as a part of nightly processing for example sbi is generating some interest and they have to put that interest on their net banking system so what they will do they will sync the two different systems right again a different example sbi have to generate the different reports right and for the reporting they might be using some another system like a tableau so what they have to do again they have to share the data again there are various architectural frameworks that we will discuss how the systems integrate with each other what all the different things that we have to consider whenever the systems go and integrate with each other right so let's move to the next slide what are the different tools offered by the salesforce to perform the integration so as we all know salesforce do offer the tools in three different areas first one is the no code tool or the low code tool another one is kind of a mix build tool and the last one is the completely developer tools right and as we all know salesforce do always recommend to use ootb that is out of the box tool first before we go and use either the mix build tool or the developer tool so at the low code level we do have the mule soft composer with the again it's a third party tool that we can use to perform the integration at the mix build level we do have the different options like we do have the options as the salesforce flow which i believe sanjay already covered right we do have the salesforce connect we do have the external services we do have the platform events as well as the change data capture with the help of this mix build tool also we can perform the integrations with the third party system and with respect to the developer again one of the most powerful tool that we do have here is the apex with the help of apex we can also perform any kind of an integration in addition to that we can use the different platform apis offered by the salesforce 
again, we will be seeing the Apex platform, APIs platform event, change data capture as we move forward in our sessions. Right. Moreover, in case your organization do have the MuleSoft, you can also use the MuleSoft Anypoint platform also. Moreover, you can also use the Heroku Connect also to perform the integration. So this is the different list of softwares offered by the Salesforce to perform the integrations. Let me take a pause and open up for any questions. So guys, if you have any question, you can uh, post your question in the chat so that Ankit can answer your queries. Uh, the window is open, folks. Do you have any question? Please let me know. I will I will uh, take those questions accordingly. Let's move towards the next slide for now. Before we go and deep dive into the integration, let's try to understand the different terminologies with respect to the integration. Because when we talked about the integration, we use the different terms. Like we talked about the APIs, we talked about the REST API, SOAP API, we talked about the authentication, authorization, we talked about the XML, we talked about the JSON, right? Uh, we talk about the JSON. These are the different terms that we use uh, in the integration. So let's try to break down each and every term one by one. First, let's go and break uh, API. Again, what is API? API stands for the Application Programming Interface. It's basically a channel with the help of which two systems go and interact with one another. Right? It's basically a channel which allows the two applications to interact with one another without any user involvement. If I have to explain the API, let's take one example. For example, we all do the uh, railway booking or the bus booking from our phone, right? Uh, for example, let's say you are booking the ticket from the IRCTC. What you are doing basically from your phone, you are sending an API request to the IRCTC database and making an inquiry. So at the back end, what is happening? Your phone, which is nothing but acting as a client here, right? So from your client, you are sending a request to the IRCTC database, which is nothing but a server to request the data. So your API always works in two terms. Your API, it will always send the request and it will always get the response from the third party system. Everything is happening without any user involvement. Only user involvement here is to make the request and after that, user have to wait to get the response. Moreover, we do have the different platforms available to make the railways inquiry. Like we do have the GoIBBO, Make My Trip. There are multiple platforms available over the web to do the web inquiry. Again, what also they are doing, whenever they have to make any inquiry or you request any inquiry on any of this platform, at the back end, they are making an API call to the IRCTC database and giving you the result. So as a part of Web 2.0, when we talk about the integration, API is kind of a breakthrough with the help of which we can communicate in between two different systems. Another term that we also use is the web service. Another term that we also use is the web service. What is web service? Web service is nothing but an interface. Web service is nothing but an interface which allows you to connect the web server as well as the web browser. Basically, the over the web, if you take any component, whenever they com this component needs to communicate, these components will communicate with the help of this web service only. And one key thing here, folks, is all web services are APIs, but all APIs are not web services. This is very important. You should know that there are multiple types of web services which are available. Majorly, we do use two only, that is the REST web service or the SOAP web service, but we also refer sometimes as the REST API or SOAP API. Why we do? Because all web services are API, but all the APIs that are available, they are not the web services. We do have the different types of APIs, like we do have the metadata API. Again, metadata API is not a web service. So there are multiple uh, web services which are available and multiple APIs are available with the help of which we can perform this integration. If you, again, deep dive, there are different types of API, like we do have the public API, we do have the private APIs, we do have the enterprise specific APIs, right? A public API means you can access that information without uh, any authentication, right? That is nothing but a public API. Private API, for private API, you have to go and create your account, you have to send the authentication details and then you can access the data. That is nothing but a 
private API. Enterprise API, for example, your organization, they have created an API for their own internal use. So if I, if I have to take an example of an SBI, let the SBI I have created an API to get the customer inquiry. What is that? That is nothing but an enterprise specific API. Okay, so whenever we talk about the API and the web service, we always talk about two terms, that is the client and server. If I have to take an example that I have taken previously, that is from your mobile phone, you are sending a request to the ISCTC database. So in this example, what is client? Your mobile phone is the client because from your mobile phone, you are making the request, right? And what is the server? The ILCTC database is the server because that server is responding with your request. So whenever we go and talk about the API, we always deal with two terminologies. First is the client and second is the server. Next term that we also frequently use is the endpoint. Endpoint is nothing but the address on which the services are hosted. Now on the server, we do have the multiple services. For example, SBI on the SBI database or on the SBI server, they do have the different types of services. Whenever you have to access a specific service, what you have to do is you have to specify the endpoint of that service. For example, you have to access the service of customer details, then you have to get the proper endpoint and pass that endpoint whenever you are making the request. So again, endpoint is very important to understand whenever you are creating an API or whenever you are also making a request to the API. Moving towards another term that is authentication. Generally, people do get confused in between two different terms, authentication and the authorization. What is authentication? Authentication means who you are. Basically, whenever you go and make any request, you have to specify or you have to let the system know who you are. You can make the authentication with the help of different options, like you can use the API key authentication by specifying a unique API key. You can use specify the authentication with the help of username and password. Most of the systems, they do, they do deal with the username and the password authentication, right? After you have specified who you are, you have to specify what you can access. And what, when you specify what you can access, that is nothing but the authorization. Whenever you specify, what you can access, that is nothing but the authorization. Like in Salesforce, what we can access is controlled by the different security layers. Similarly, with what you can access is also controlled by the connected apps in the Salesforce. When we go and talk about the different terminologies like the remote site settings or the name credential or the connected app, we'll talk more about this authorization. So whenever we are making any integration, we have to take care of authentication as well as the authorization as well. Next one is the two frequently used terms, that is the XML and the JSON. What is XML? XML is a markup language. XML is a markup language. Like your HTML is a markup language. Similarly, XML is also a markup language which has been used to store and to data interchange. In the legacy systems, many times we do use the XML to store and perform the data interchange operation. So with the help of in between the XML tags, what we do, we generally go and pass the different types of data. Again, if I had to take an example, how the XML format looks like, let me open the notepad. So in XML, whenever we have to go and share the data, we have to always specify the start tag and the close tag. For example, let's say I have to specify the user detail. So how we will create the XML for this? In the, the good thing about the XML is you can name your own tag. So for example, user detail, this is the details that I have to share. Every start tag in the XML, it does have a close tag. So let me zoom this. Every start tag in the XML do have a close tag. For example, here we do have the start tag as user detail. It does have a close tag. In case you have to pass the different types of data, for example, I have to go and pass my first name. I will go and pass the first name, something like this. With the start tag and with the close tag in here, I go and put the data that I have to pass. Similarly, I can pass any types of data here. Let's say I have to also pass the last name. I'm passing the last name here. You can see here all these tags. I am naming this at the runtime. Again, there are multiple rules that we have to follow. We do not have to deep dive into that much detail for the basics for now, but we do have the specific XSD language, how to define the tags, what each tag will do, what in case you have to apply the different types of validations for the different types of input that also we can do with the help of XSD language. 
not only a simple data, you can also pass the complex data in the XML. So in case I have to pass the complex data like address, this is how I can go and pass the complex data. So for example, in the address, I do have the multiple details, like I do have a city as Pune. I have to go and pass the state as Maharashtra. So you can go and pass any type of complex data also in the right? Now, another thing, another thing that we do have here is the JSON. What is JSON? JSON stands for the JavaScript object notation. Java, JSON stands for the JavaScript object notation. Whenever we talk about the JSON, it is very much easy build. It is very much easy to perform the different operations on the data. Most of the modern uh, APIs or most of the modern APIs that developers are creating or most of the enterprises are using, they all deal in the JSON format. Most of the legacy systems, they do, they do deal only in the XML, but uh, most of the modern APIs that are available nowadays, they do deal in the JSON. The good thing is your sales force, it, it deals in both in XML as well as in the JSON. Whenever you are performing the integration, you have to let the system know whether you are passing the data in the XML form or you are passing the data in the JSON form. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's a text form where we do have the values in the form of key and value. If I have to store the same details in the JSON form, how we will do that? So for example, I have to go and specify, send the user detail. I will go and put here user detail is equal to you can see here, everything here will be in the object form, right? It is the starting bracket and this is the closing bracket. In case I have to pass the first name, I will go and put here the first name followed by the colon. This will be the key, right? And whatever the value that I have to pass, let's say I have to pass the value here as okay. All these properties will be separated by the comma. If I have to again pass this, I will put here last name followed by the J. Similarly, if I have to pass a complex information like here, I have to pass the address, how we pass the complex info, uh, information in this one, we'll put the address here. Again, if we tell how the multiple properties, we will start the new object here. And in this object, we can go and pass the different types of information. Like I will go and pass here the city as Pune. And state as Maharashtra. City as Pune and the state as Maharashtra. This is how you go and pass the detail in the XML form. This is how you go and pass the detail in the JSON form. JSON always deals in the form of key as well as the value. So this will be your key and this will be your value. This will be your key and this will be your value. In this one, this will be your key and your value is in the object form. This object again have two sub properties. One is the city, Pune, state, Maharashtra. I hope this technology will make sense to you and it will help you to understand when we go and talk about the endpoint, we go and talk about the authentication, authorization, we go and talk about the using the XML format or the JSON format. Yeah, Ankit, very Let well explained. So uh, maybe now we can take some questions. I can see a few questions are there in the chat. So if you can. Sure. Pick them. The first question says that does MuleSoft Composer or any point provide free versions? We can practice them. Yes, for us, uh, you have to go and register on the MuleSoft uh, website. They do provide the one month uh, free subscription that you can use to make the integration or for the practice purpose. Again, after expired, you can create another uh, email account or you can use another email account and use uh, uh, use another free account for the MuleSoft. Uh, next question is, which is most widely used tool? Again, Viba, it depends upon the type of integration that you have to do. All the tools have their own specific purpose, right? In case uh, you have to perform the complex integration, you have to definitely go for the Apex, but in case you have to go and perform a kind of a simple integration where you have to just make the request and get the simple data, you can use the low code or the 
middle code automation tools as well it's completely up to business requirement which auto which uh, kind of a tool that you will use yes uh nana will be talking about the limitations about the integration as we move forward there are few limitations i'll not say limitations but there are few corner limits that the salesforce have defined whenever make we are making the integrations from the salesforce to the third party system we'll be talking more about those uh limitations as we move forward uh which is more powerful mulesoft or apex again uh as it mulesoft you have to go and purchase the license from the mulesoft or from the salesforce right salesforce basically on the mulesoft in case in your project you are using the esbs as a mulesoft then you have to go and purchase the specific license if you are if you do have the license available you can definitely try with the mulesoft but again if, uh, there is no comparison direct comparison whether you should go for the mulesoft or apex mulesoft have their own purpose apex have their own purpose so half of the thing you can definitely do it in the mulesoft to take the burden from the apex but whenever you have to write down the business logic apex is the only place where you have to go uh there are different platform apis available sampath uh like in our session we will be covering the rest api soap api bulk api as well as the streaming api but apart from that we do have the different uh platform apis available like we do have the analytics apis we do have the cdps related api we do have the metadata apis is a complete list available for the different platform apis uh where we should utilize the soap okay i believe i missed that question all right uh so she has asked the question the rest api is very common nowadays based on your experience where we can utilize the soap api uh Again, the difference where you should go and pick the REST API or the SOAP API, we'll be talking as we move forward in our session. But let me give a short answer to you. Uh, we use the REST API whenever we have to make the lightweight applications. For example, an application that uh, you have to make an API call from the mobiles or from uh, devices, right? And that the data that you are getting does not require high amount of security. Then you can go for the REST API. but in case you are making an integration for some financial transactions right where the security is the primary concern they need to go for the soap api so the so the direct categorization is in case of higher security go for the soap api if you see most of the legacy systems which we used in the banks or which we used in the payments industry they do use the soap api but in case we have to share a kind of a lightweight information right we can go for the rest api again for chat gpt it's kind of a paid tool we have to check internally if uh, we can perform that integration with the chat tool uh, chat gpt or not uh madhu we will be covering here the postman uh, because salesforce also do recommend that we should use the postman to test our apis so down the session i will be teaching you how we can configure the postman how we can make the api request from the postman to perform the different types of integration uh neha what are neha asked the question what are the standard apis and the custom api standard apis are those which is provided by the salesforce when we go and configure the postman i will show you the different types of standard apis provided by the salesforce that you can use without writing any line of code custom apis that you are creating according to your own business requirement in case your business requirement uh do have some specific business logic then you can go and write down your own custom api here i believe we are good for now sanjay we can move yeah, forward yeah sure ankit we can move forward okay let's go and before we go and perform the integration generally we go and define what kind of a pattern that we have to follow as i said we go and perform the integrations for the different purpose so first we have to identify the purpose of the integration so generally we do the integration at the data layer or at the process layer or at the virtual layer when we say that we do the integration at the data layer there are two things can be possible one is 
either you are getting the data from the external system into your system or you are just uh, visualizing the data from the external system into your system again i am repeating there are three different pattern approaches that we do have data integration process integration or the virtual integration data integration means you are syncing the data in between the two different system when you sync the data in, in between the two different system there are two approaches that you can use you can either uh, get the data from the third party system into your system or you can put some uh, methodology so that you can visualize the data from the third party system into your system that is nothing but a data integration another one that we do have is the process integration what will happen in the case of process integration means uh, there will be one or more than one application where we have to split the processes for example if i had to take an example of an sbi let's say you go and make a request on the sbi to create your customer right now after creating the customer you also want that they should go and create your saving account as well let's assume that sbi have two different system one system is to create the customer and another system is to create the saving is to create the uh, saving account again before creating the saving account it is mandatory that we have to go and create the customer so what we have to do here is we have this two system needs to be work together as soon as the customer has been created the next process to be triggered to create to create the saving account how this is possible it is possible with the help of process integration where we do have the multiple processes defined in the different system and we want to integrate these different processes with the help of the integration another one that is the virtual integration as i already said virtual integration means you can visualize the data from the third party system into your system what you are doing is you are visualizing the data from the third party system into your system let's say your organization do the order management in the sap system or in the oracle system but they want to see all those orders inside the salesforce now you do have two options either you get all those orders from the a uh, third party system like the oracle or from the sap into your system which will make the duplicacy issue right the data will be duplicated in two different systems and you have to always make sure that you are syncing the data in between two different system another approach that you can do here is uh you can provide a mechanism in the salesforce so that you can view the data from the third party system into the salesforce whenever we are doing that kind of an integration it is referred as the virtual integration okay now there are different integration patterns before we go and decide what kind of integration that we have to do we have to make the decision what kind of patterns that we have to use so suppose have defined this six different patterns in which integration is to be performed whenever you are doing any kind of an integration any of this integration will be fall in this one of the pattern any of the integration will fall in one of this right so the first pattern that we do have here is the remote process invocation which is referred as the request and the reply pattern first integration pattern that we do have here is the remote process invocation request and the reply pattern what will happen in this pattern is the request will be sent let's say from your mobile you are making you are sending the request to the third party system right and you are waiting there unless and until you are getting the response from the third party system let's say from the salesforce you are sending the request to the oracle system and you are waiting unless and until you are getting the response from the oracle system that is referred as the request and the reply right you will be waiting there unless and until you are getting the response back from the system whenever you are implementing that kind of a design it is referred as a request and the reply pattern another one that we do have here is the fire and forget what is uh rather than we go and send the records one after the other right let's, let's say we have defined the process where all the modified records will be accumulated and after a certain period of time we are executing the batch so that all the modified records will be going into the external system whenever we are performing this kind of a pattern it is referred as the batch data synchronization next one is the remote call in as of now 
from the Salesforce, we are making the call to the third party system. Now, let's say the Oracle is making the call to the Salesforce now. Now, the table has been changed, right? The, the position on the table has been changed. Now, this time, the Oracle as the system, it is making the call into the Salesforce. Whenever we do have that kind of a pattern, it is referred as the remote call-in pattern. Next one is the publish as well as the subscribe. What is publish and the subscribe pattern is it, your source system, it, as soon as the uh, your source system, what it will do, it will publish an event. As soon as the integration has been done, or uh, as soon as the source system have to set up an integration, what the source system will do, source system will publish an event. And the number of systems which have to uh, perform the integration with the source system, they will be act as a subscriber. So what they will do, they will listen for those events and as soon as the event has been received, they will process them accordingly. Again, I'm repeating what will happen in the case of publish and subscribe, your source system, which is also referred as a publisher system, it will publish an event. For example, let's say, if I have to take an again the same example that there are two systems, uh, one system which is you have to create the customer, another system uh, which have to create the CASA account or the saving account, right? As soon as uh, account has been, as soon as the customer has been created, what the first system will do? First system will publish an event, and the system which have to perform the next action, it will listen to that event, and as soon as the event has been received, it will perform the remaining action. So whenever we are doing that kind of integration, it is referred as the publisher as well as the subscriber model. Next one is the data virtualization. Next one is the data virtualization. What will happen in the case of data virtualization? The data is available in the third party system. Rather than you go and get the data from the third party system and into your system and reconcile the data, what you are doing here is basically you are making the provision in the sales force so that you can view the data from third party system into your system. Whenever we are doing that kind of an integration, it is referred as the data virtualization. With the help of data virtualization, we can see the data from the third party system into our system. We can take the help of the external objects. We can go and create the inter indirect lookup or the external lookup and we can perform the data virtualization with those operations. Again, I'm repeating, we do have the different types of integration pattern, request and the reply pattern. In the request and the reply pattern, the request will be sent and it will wait unless and until the request has been received. In the next pattern, fire and forget, it will send the request but it will not wait uh, for the response. As soon as the response is available, the target system will send the response back to the source system. In the first one, it is waiting. In the second one, it is it is not waiting. It is just sending the request, and as, once the response is available, it will process that response, right? Next one is the batch data synchronization. In this, the data is will be processed in the batches. In this, the data will be processed in the batches. Again, the batch data synchronization can be happened in either of the system. It can be happened in the Salesforce or in some external system as well. But the key thing here is whenever we are processing the data, the data will be processed in the batch in the batch manner. Next one is the remote call-in. What will happen in the case of remote call-in? What will happen in the case of remote call-in is the third party system it will make a call to the sales force. Let's say we do have the Oracle as the system and Oracle wants to retrieve the data from the sales force or Oracle wants to perform the uh, data insertion operation or update operation or delete operation in the sales force. They will do that with the help of this remote call-in. Another one that we do have here is the publisher as well as the subscriber model. What will happen in this model? One system will publish an event or your source system, it will publish an event and one system or more than one system will listen that event. The system which is publishing an event, it is referred as the publisher and the system which are listening to that event, they are referred as the subscriber. Another one that we do have here is the data virtualization. In the case of data virtualization, there is no need to uh, get the data or sync the data from third party system inside our system. We can use the data virtualization concept 
and we can view the data from the third party system into our system right we can view the data moreover we can also perform the different operation on the data with the help of this data virtualization we can also do the reporting of the data that is available from the third party system into the self force by using the concept of data virtualization do anyone have any questions Minakshi and few other they asked me to repeat. I hope yeah, it is I clear mean, now. What yeah. is fire and forget? Actually, uh, there was some internet issue, so you already repeated everything, so that is fine now. Got you. Huh. Let's go and talk about the next thing. That is the timing of an integration. So first we talked about the pattern of an integration. After that we talk. First we talked about the approach of an integration. Which is three data process as well as virtual. After that, we talk about the different patterns of integration. Now, another key thing that we have to talk about is the timing of an integration. Another thing that we have to go and define is the timing of an integration. Before we go and write down any integration, here are the few factors that we have to make clear, right? Before we go and perform any kind of an integration, we have to first finalize the approach. After that, we have to go and finalize the pattern. After that, we have to go and decide whether we have to use the synchronous or we have to go and use the asynchronous operation. Right? So, what is synchronous? In the case of synchronous, you will get the response immediately from the third party system. Right? The result will be returned immediately from the third party system. Let's say you are making a request and immediately you are getting the response. That is nothing but a synchronous. Another one that is asynchronous. What will happen in the case of asynchronous? Let's say you are getting the huge amount of requests. It is not possible for you to real time address all those requests. So you are implementing the queue based mechanism or the message based mechanism where you are putting all your requests into the queue. And as soon as the resources are available, they are addressing those requests. So whenever we do have that kind of a pattern, it is referred as the asynchronous. In the case of asynchronous, we does not have to wait for the response. As soon as the resources will be available, the system will send the response back to the request system. That is nothing but the asynchronous integration. So there are two timings of an integration. That is the synchronous timing, where we'll immediately get the response. Another one is the asynchronous, where the response, it will be coming, not immediately, but there will be a delay in the response. So your system, it will send the request after that, as soon as the resources will be available, it will be sending the response back to the source system. Let's have this last slide for today. And before we go and uh, wrap up the today's session, that is the direction of an integration. Right? So as of now, we talked about the multiple factors. We talked about the approaches. We talked about the timings. We talked about the patterns. Right? Now, Salesforce have put uh, documented very well when you should use what kind of a pattern, right? Salesforce have documented this very well when you should go and use what kind of a pattern. So in case you are integrating the Salesforce with some another system. So there are two types of directions that we do have. First direction that we refer as the outbound direction where Salesforce is integrating with some another system. Another type of direction is the inbound direction where another system is making the integration with the Salesforce. So in the case of outbound direction, right? Again, here we do have these three options, process integration, data integration, and the virtual integration based on the timing, synchronous as well as asynchronous. This is the chart that we have to follow to decide what kind of pattern that we will use. We talked about these different patterns. When to use what kind of a pattern, it will be decided based on this chart. Again, if you are integrating the Salesforce with some another system, and you have to do the process integration in the asynchronous way, you will go and use the fire and the forget. In case you have to use the perform the integration with another system and you have to perform the virtual integration, then you will use this data virtualization. Next thing is in case some another system, it is making the integration with the Salesforce, right? Most of the places you can see here, we are using the remote call in or in case we have to perform the asynchronous data operation, then we can also go for the batch data synchronization as well. Right? But many times we will be using the remote call-in integration pattern only. 
most of the times we will be using the remote call in integration pattern only so based on your business requirement once you got answers for all this point what approach that you have to use whether the integration needs to be the synchronous or asynchronous whether the self force have to do the integration or another system is making the integration with the self force you can define what kind of patterns that you have to use you can define what kind of patterns that you have to use right let me go over if do we have any questions we have direct feature of integrating to sf ox uh sales force to sales force uh, i have to check nagendra about this i'm not sure what is the question uh sir could you please explain the real time usage of those six types tomorrow you are asking about the real time usage of these six types again real time usage it's completely depend upon your business logic only right in case uh the business says that as soon as the button has been clicked they want to see the response on the ui then you will go and use the request and the reply approach in case the business says that they need to do the validation in the background and in case the validation is not successful right you go and send an email then you can go and use the fire and the forget pattern right in case you have to go and perform the integration in between two different systems right and those integrations uh we have to send the data in the form of batches then you will go for the batch data integration for the remote call in in case there is a third party system which is making the call to the sales force they have to use the remote call in either they can use the remote call in or they can use the batch data synchronization publish and the subscribe whenever you are dealing with the streaming api let's say what you are you are sending one message and that message you have to send to the multiple system and then you go and send that message to the multiple systems you can take the help of this integration pattern so that more than one pattern can subscribe to the same message right data virtualization you have the external you have the database available or externally hosted you want to view the data into your system you can take the help of the data virtualization there right so based on the business requirement and based on the answers that you will get on the approach and the timing and the uh, direction of an integration you have to decide what kind of pattern that you have to use uh time out time for the integration basically uh i uh, i the exact answer i don't recall right now there is there is there is a limitation uh, for the time out uh, if i am not wrong i have to i will check this uh, and i will come back to you tomorrow nakam what is the exact time i think uh, that we can have in the govern limit document so let me just check quickly sure if i am not wrong it's 120 second uh, but i had to check yeah you are correct it's 120 second right yeah for both synchronous and asynchronous it is 120 seconds it is 120 oh, seconds yeah, guys, so the, your complete transaction time it the way the time out works is let's say in your one transaction if you are making the 10 different integration then ah, the accumulative time of all this time out cannot be more than 120 second so you have yeah. to go and design your one single transaction in such a way yeah so it is saying like maximum cumulative time out for all call outs right. it can be right. http request or web service call in a single transaction it should be uh, less than 120 seconds so guys i just shared the link in the uh, chat as well so you can go through and check it and we can make total number of call outs the quantity is 100 so http request or web service call out in a one in one transaction the limit is 100 right so yeah so the link which i shared so there are lots of governor limits available you can go through with that and uh, ankit someone requested like to go slow so maybe from tomorrow uh, sure <laughs> yeah sure i will take care of it vladimir it was too fast it was too fast for today yeah, today it actually, is mostly theory Yeah. from tomorrow it will be more practical so definitely the speed going to be the bit slow yeah so actually uh, people are from different uh, country as well so 
uh, due to uh, accent, so they want some like so. Uh, with demo, I think it will be uh, slow automatically. And uh, right. yeah, right. I think people like the session and they are demanding for demos. So I already replied like you will be having those in upcoming sessions. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. So we'll be having the demos on the postman. We'll be creating the REST services. We will be creating the complex REST services with the help of wrapper. We will be seeing the demo uh, how we can integrate the third-party APIs which are available. Right. Uh, we will be also seeing how we can integrate two different systems, two different Salesforce systems as well uh, by using the OAuth mechanism. That also I'll be try to cover with the demo. So lots of things in the upcoming session, folks. Please make sure you are attending it and let me know. I definitely take this feedback that I'll go a bit slow. I understand that, uh, Yanga. I will make sure that I'll be a bit slow. Uh, onward. Yeah. So guys, please share your feedback about today's session so that it will. Um, boost Ankit's motivation. So I'm really very impressed with Ankit and uh, like we are uh, connected for more than one year and uh, like this is for the first time uh, I was able to have Ankit on this platform and uh, like how well he uh, explained all the concepts related to integration so that is good. Uh, I consider myself less expert so I just try to find uh, more expert as compared to me. So that's why I have Ankit with me. And if you can share some uh, feedback, so definitely it will boost his uh, motivation. Yeah, so Ankit, you can- Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, for, yeah. yeah, thanks Sanjay for providing me this platform and helping me to connect in with yeah, good audience. Thank yeah, you. So more than uh, 430 folks joined this session and right now 94 are uh, watching live. And I, I'm sure like within a week, this number will cross more than 2000 views. So it is a huge, so. yeah, huge number. So you can yeah. read some let's, of the. Let's some. share the sessions, right? Let's share the session with the folks that you know, right? I I want this session should help all of them uh, to learn and to grow in their uh, career. Yeah. Okay. So I think uh, uh, like next topics will be covered in the tomorrow session. So folks, please join all the sessions related to integration because. Ankit will be covering all the integration related part and maybe going forward, uh, he recently did a certification in CPQ. So I will request him uh, to have a sessions on those as well. So let's see how things goes in future, right? So he's very active in the community and doing lots of stuff. So uh, I'm happy like you are learning from the expert. So thank you guys for joining uh, today's session. And thank you so much, Ankit, for providing knowledge to the community. So, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank guys. you all. Yeah. See you tomorrow, same time. We'll share you the link in the Telegram group. Thank you, everybody. See you. Thank you all. Bye bye. Bye.